Bueno, hola a todos, compañeros y compañeras. Hola, everyone, comrades. Como les decía antes, les traigo el saludo de la As I was saying, I bring the greeting from the coordination of the International Socialist League. We're living times of struggles, rebellions, and revolutions, as well as great opportunities and challenges for revolutionaries. Capitalism is bringing more and more misery for workers in the whole world. Hundreds of thousands of workers are losing their jobs, and those who still have them see their rights cut and are seeing more flexibilization and precarity. Hundreds of thousands are losing their jobs to guarantee the profits of a completely insensible and parasitical social class, racism, sexism, and homophobia, and uh, depredation of the environment are growing in many, pay, many countries, fascism and the, sec and the sectarian religious uh, politics are showing their, uh, their strength again. But we're seeing how uh, the peoples are standing up again and the youth is in the front lines of all the struggles. All of you are part of this internationalism that is emerging as well which is having coordinated actions uh, of millions of women for the rights of actions against racism, of defense of the planet, and ultimately uh, the confrontation of precarious labor. We're convinced that you will also be, you will also be at the vanguard of a beginning to resolve uh, the unresolved problem that uh, Trotsky said, uh, who was murdered 80 years ago, and which is still uh, on the table, and building strong revolutionary parties in your countries and a great international to take up the struggle, the final struggle against capitalism. We are convinced that this forum will be a new success and will be a, an incentive to a push for and organize the struggles against precarious labor and decadent, decadent education and to fight for a socialist future. And I wish you all a great forum. Okay, so we welcome again everybody uh, from 30 countries, from five continents, and we are just a, a shortly we will begin with the central reports and, and all the speakers of this event. Now may we'll hear from Mariano Rosa from Argentina. Hola. No sé si se escucha, se escucha bien ahí. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Perfect. En realidad, en primer lugar, actually first I'd like to tell you all how happy I am at meeting you again, like we did a little while ago, the great international conference we made possible. Okay, so first of all, it's great to be seeing each other again after the great international conference that we held last time. The reality of the pandemic and the crisis imposed the debate over labor precariousness and decadence. We believe we, we chose a, a, a good moment for this activity to discuss these uh, issues in the middle of the Before pandemic and the crisis the that place these debates Argentina, on the, on the I wanted table. To begin with a general I wanted to start by a, At this stage, a general assessment the for of speaking of young directly about precarious. Argentina. Labor precariousness capitalism in this stage uh, the makes the life are of not millions of accidents uh, within the system or completely precarious. COVID. Rather, they are characteristics of capitalism today. Capitalism. And in recurring crisis in capitalism with 
capitalism is like this. So the COVID crisis is not an accident of the system. To overcome this crisis, to ensure that the one percent. So to come back from their crisis. Regain economic profitability. The system will use the millions the millions of unemployed as a terror weapon to impose labor precariousness as a norm for millions of young people, not as an exception or an accident. As far as education goes, the distance line international from several years ago is to privatize with two goals in mind. On the one side, to do business, and on the other hand, to use state money for other purposes. Subsidize big corporations to pay external debts. Now with COVID, in these virtual ways imposed on us, the situation in education has a new facet. The digital inequality happens worldwide. That this, this type of work, remote work, that flexibilizes and it appears for just one sector of uh, education, and it appears as a window, a business opportunity in the virtual field that opens for the capital of education. For example, Zuckerberg. Facebook and Instagram's owner, Bill Gates and Google, are investing in this branch of the digital industry, betting on transforming education into a virtual, remote, featureless, pedagogically impoverished, standardized for the youth, but extremely profitable process for the capitalists in the area. I say this because there are here today many young people and students who are in a precarious situation and who we've met during these weeks of struggles, whether on the streets or virtually, and who come to this forum to know, to get to know us more, to decide if they want to join our organizations in each country. For them, we have a first essential notion. Capitalism is precarious work and life. Capitalism means education as a privilege. So the fight for the most basic demands of the working youth or the students against the digital gap, these basic demands must question capitalism. In some to ensure non-precarious work or education as a right, well, we need to This is a political task in itself. Then the movement we seek to propel means getting together the working youth and students is anti-capitalist because of the task that proposes, it is potentially revolutionary, it must go beyond borders and it must be. So, to go directly to Argentina, here are some hard facts. Let me show you if I can. In Argentina, seven out of minor workers or under 30 years of age are precarious. They have no medical insurance, no union rights, their income is below the poverty line. And apps workers, global pedidos uh, in Argentina, are almost 70,000, and almost all of them are under precarious work conditions. During quarantine, we already have seven delivery workers dead. Fast food companies, 90% of them have an income of 
90 under the poverty line, $380 a month. I, they don't have their rights uh, guaranteed either. There are layoffs, no measures to protect them during the pandemic. In face of this situation, lived by the majority of the youth in our country, what is the role of traditional politics and unions, bureaucratic unions? They vote for laws that favor corporations. The national government a few days ago, a government that calls itself progressive, propelled legislation to favor Amazon and similar companies, international companies, that, that mean tax benefits for them and an extreme exploitation of workers. In Buenos Aires City, also a few days ago, and precarized workers protested. A law was approved with the support of the national government that favors precarious working conditions. What's the situation with the education in Argentina? 50% of the youth don't finish high school. They should. Only one or two out of 10 finish a university major. Among higher education institutes or teachers' colleges, 50% of them work and study, and 70% work under precarious uh, conditions. So the quarantine only made the gap bigger. Desertion grew, dropout grew because of lack of connectivity or lack of uh, devices. For example, yeah, so desertion has grown. To finish uh, the facts on Argentina, let's talk about the university budget. Each year, $1 billion are destined for uh, university, for the universities. We just learned that the government of Alberto Fernandez and Cristina Fernandez offer the external debt hawks to compensate them for Macri's uh, scam. It offered them $15 billion to compensate them for that loss. So in education, the budget was frozen, and banking people were awarded with the equivalent of 15-year budgets. That's, that's the reality. So, so I think it's really important to take into account that these are the, the debates that matter. We have two trenches here. On the one side, we have corporations, bureaucrats of uh, union bureaucrats, and on the other side, we have students uh, working and studying under precarious situations. So we need our own politics to fight this. To finish, some proposals. So we need to we need to find measures to strengthen the our movement. In the first place, we think we need to make a sort of a flag and all our organizations of support to the struggles that are already being given in different regions in the student movement. So the slogan would be, no one is left out. So this means this is in favor, this is a fight against desertion, for a fair budget, for COVID scholarships. So uh, we see 
Colombia, Lebanon, Paraguay, and before in Ecuador or Pakistan have an active students' movement. And beyond inequality, the first response in this forum, from this forum, should be mutual cooperation in these student, uh, student struggles of the youth around the world. So we need to get close to the best of the student movement and incorporate that to our organization. Second, there's a growing movement in recent of the working youth under precarious uh, conditions, which is central. Like Jesse said a few moments ago, today in Brazil, there's a new strike of delivery gals and guys. On July 1st, international strike of delivery workers was an extremely powerful action in several countries. We think, we think this phenomenon will continue to grow. Struggles will keep growing. The MST in Argentina, its experience with, its, with the youth, created a national association of the youth under precarious work conditions. Lots of workers have joined this uh, organization, this movement. This demand is not of one country. So we should all get organized to offer international or support worldwide and to get some concrete actions ready to face co big corporations like McDonald's, Burger King, which are really bad for, for the youth because of their exploitation levels, high exploitation levels. We have, a, in closing, we have great material in our international manifesto that says Young Lives Matter to spread. We published it uh, not long ago. It was the fruit of uh, collective collaboration to spread our vision of the world from the perspective of the socialist youth and with proposal for an exit or a solution of the pro program and the organization for the youth suffering capitalism, political violence, racism, repression in Argentina and other countries. We have to spread this manifesto. We have to make sure it gets to people among friends, co-workers, acquaintances, everywhere. And of course, we have great tasks in our agenda, uh, the ISL agenda, starting with the ceremony on August 22nd. It will be an international homage to uh, commemorate social, to our great Trotsky. Just in a moment, the capitalist crisis is has great validity and where the youth can uh, develop their ideas. Last conference, the international conference, was a great motivation for us. We decided to make this forum, we voted the manifesto, and we are convinced that this, this in, instance could be a new and great drive for next week's, so we want to motivate all people attending, all the youth attending today, to start to join us and to start working with our, our organizations here. Uh, that is all. Thank you all very much. Can you hear me? Me uh, Thank you, comrade. First of all, it is a pleasure being with all of you today. Uh, Comrades, uh, this pandemic and the global turmoil that surrounds it is a manifestation of the present socio-economic political system, which is in constant decay. 
The way capitalism has destroyed nature, Corona is just a beginning of the many uh, natural disasters that await us. De la manera que el capitalismo destruyó a la naturaleza, el Corona es solo no el way comienzo de los muchos desastres naturales que nos esperan y este sistema no es para nada capaz de enfrentar. 30 years of economic policies of austerity, privatization, and años de políticas económicas neoliberales de austeridad, especially to the health and education sector, has made the state so important. Okay, uh, 30 years of neoliberal economic policies of austerity. Can you stop, uh, Omar? Hi, comrade. Can you stop for just a second? We have to solve some issues. Can't hear you. If you can, if you can stop for one second. Estamos terminando de resolver un problemita. No, no me llegó la invitación. Me tiene que llegar para que se me pueda escuchar. Resolvemos eso y continuamos. Omer. We we have a small problem with translation in one mm -hmm. in one of the channels. I can't hear you. Uh, no nos escucha. Probemos ahí, a ver, Omer. Continue, please. Okay, sorry. So, 30 years of neoliberal economic policies of austerity, privatization, and cuts to the public spending, and especially to the uh, education and health sector has made states so important that they seem helpless in front of a virus which is so small that it is not even visible to the naked eye. Um, Pakistan inherited the, the present education system from the British imperialists in 1947, but since Pakistan could never become a healthy capitalist state, uh, it uh, not only Pero como nunca logró convertirse en un estado capitalista saludable, no solo fue incapaz de maintain it. So it quickly started to rot. Uh, then came the era of uh, privatization, and like everything else, education uh, sector was also open for private investors, and it exploded like a firecracker. And now you have a school in every other street of Pakistan. Sorry, Omar, C can you stop for one second again? I'm very sorry. Uh, we have uh, a problem with the Spanish translation and, and the comrades are asking us if uh, we can fix it. Can you okay. wait for okay. one second? Sure. sure. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. uh. पर हाँ जरा रोक रोक के बोला करो ताकि मैं उसे ना ट्रांसलेट कर दूँ ओमर Continuemos. Continue, please. Let's go on. Thank you. Um, so, now you have a school in every other street of Pakistan. But the dichotomy of the system, and which is a clear testament to the unevenness created by the capital, um, is that despite having so many schools, 25 million children uh, are out of schools. And uh, according to a recent report from Daily Dawn, uh, 10 million more students will not be able to go back to, uh, to their institutions after this pandemic is over. Uh, when it comes to higher education, the situation is not any different. Uh, only less than 9% of the total population has access to higher education. And because of this shrinked capacity, the merit is so is, is so high and is through the roof that uh, it forces students into this cutthroat competition where uh, only a 0.5% difference can determine whether you will be going to a university that year or not. And, that has, and this has absolutely devastating impacts uh, on the psychology, growth, and critical thinking of our youth. 
um, apart from these structural problems, the quality of education given to our students at any level is absolutely pathetic and, and useless. Uh, the curriculum is non-scientific. The teaching methods are old and redundant. Um, and, uh, and, and not a single skill worth mentioning being taught to our students, which could help them prepare for modern job economy. Um, just today, the Punjab government has banned uh, more than 100 books of different publishers uh, saying that they do not comply with the uh, Islamic values. Um, our universities are in complete disconnect with the industry, so much so that uh, um, a student that graduates from a university has to then go on and spend two to three more years in the field to acquire the necessary um, experience and exposure so that he can earn a living out of it. Um, and these are uh, some of the most exploitative years of the so-called um, professional working class. Um, every year, almost 3 million students complete their education and enter into this already saturated market, and there are no jobs. Uh, and this decayed capitalist system uh, cannot produce such number of jobs annually. And, this, uh, and due to the pandemic, the, this number will uh, increase exponentially. Uh, and it is expected that out of 60 million total workforce, approximately 30 million will lose their jobs. And the current PTI government under the influence of IMF and under the guidelines of IMF has uh, uh, halted uh, employing people in the public sector. And the private sector is so weak and, and is insufficient to cater the need. The neoliberal idea of using technology and, and internet to create virtual jobs and, and services-based jobs like Uber drivers uh, has been nothing but a shameless joke in a country like Pakistan where we neither have infrastructure nor we can build uh, which is required for such economy. Only 30% of the total population has access to, uh, to, to internet and according to IMF itself, uh, 20 million out of 22 million uh, total population cannot afford internet. This huge unemployment is fundamental in creating uh, compliance among students and, and the youth with the system and this race to the bottom. Today we are alienated more than ever before. Our lives are deprived of uh, joy and meaning and any hope for the future is lost. So here is the bottom line. The, this whole situation is like a pressure cooker, which can explode any time. And this was a pressure cooker way before Corona. Uh, the pandemic only uh, accelerated the crisis by many folds. The way governments and the ruling elite have responded to it uh, only showed how absolutely disconnected they are from the ground realities. And uh, now they are, uh, uh, they just unilaterally announced the online classes despite knowing that um, uh, that uh, majority of the population has neither access nor can afford internet and the gadgets that are required uh, uh, for it. And now they are uh, deciding to uh, open universities and the education system uh, when we clearly know that they lack the infrastructure which is uh, uh, to, to, to follow the international SOPs uh, provided by WHO. So the system has now decided to literally kill us. Last six months had a great impact on the general consciousness of the masses, workers, students, and youth. Uh, and there is a radical shift in it. Um, uh, because of the isolation, economic depression, and uh, uh, the dysfunctional political order, the frustration among the masses is uh, building up. Uh, and we believe that there is a possibility of a movement in the near future around the, the general issues of masses. It is very important for us to strategize keeping in view this possibility of potential uh, uh, movement. Revolutionary Student Front, along with Jammu Kashmir National Student Federation and BNT, is determined to organize youth and students across the country 
Um, last year, we built a huge campaign around the restoration of student union, uh, but although our demands are yet to uh, uh, be materialized. Um, but the anger is there among the students, youth, and as well as the workers. And uh, on 5th of August, we are going to witness uh, huge protests across the country. Um, and from railway to airlines, from telecommunication employees to energy sector employees, uh, clerks, and every major public sector will going, uh, is going to uh, get shut down on 5th of August. Um, and our comrades from, and this is a huge development, and our comrades from uh, Pakistan Trade Union Defense Campaign has, have played a decisive role in, uh, um, uh, uh, in, in bringing workers from all these different sectors together on a single platform and convincing them for a collective action. And the way the situation is changing, we are very hopeful that we'll not be able, not only be able to win major victories for the student movement and, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the movement of the working class, but also for the cause of revolution. Uh, long live internationalism, long live the socialist revolution. Thank you. Hello, comrades. The youth all, the youth all around uh, the world is increasingly pushed into futility and precariousness. The Turkey shows similarities with other countries in the fact that young people are thrown into life in much more difficult conditions compared to the past generations. To absorb the youth into the class struggle, it is necessary to make theoretically sufficient analysis. The reason for precariousness of youth in particular are neoliberal policies, uh, disorganization and non-unionism. For example, young people usually work for very low wages and without insurance. Flexible working hours take the life away. That means we are subject to the overexploitation. Low wages and flexibility force young people to work in more than one job at the same time. Especially this is a problem for young people who are still students. Employers can impose these awful conditions on the youth because the disorganization, non-unionization is the reality of the working classes that limits young, young workers' bargaining power against the capitalists. Uh, according to a, to a survey conducted two months ago in Turkey, 25.7% of the population aged between 15 and 20, uh, 24 are neither in education nor in employment. One of every three young people who graduated from vocational and technical high schools or universities are neither in education uh, nor in employment. This rate rises hits to 30% for women. The rates are higher for Kurds, Syrians, and other migrants. 70% of the youth lives dependent on their family. In other words, young people are economically deprived of the economic independence to go beyond the family dependence. Education is one of the public areas targeted by austerity policies as an area country. According to a comparison between the Organization of Economic Development and Cooperation Countries, Turkey ranked last among OECD countries on public spending on education. The other topic, which has very important ties with the precarious working conditions, is the education. Maybe we should talk more about universities and their roles in this sense. Um, there are about uh, 26 universities, 2,600 universities in Turkey. Only more than 50 of them are in Istanbul. Quantitatively, there are many universities. The current government shows this as its own success. Um, but I have to say that in terms of quality, they are very bad. Students do not have appropriate classrooms, library, activities of social clubs, catering and accommodation opportunities, etc. 
these universities exist only to produce cheap labor force. This is the same for the high school education. Only the schools in some city centers have relatively good conditions that are mostly located in the higher classes. The situation is worse in technical vocational high schools. The new generation is usually, usually called Z generation, which characterized by anxiety about the future. We have experience, experienced a striking political spontaneous reaction of the high school youth in Turkey. The so-called Z generation gives reaction to the problems in creative ways. Here's an example from Turkey. Erdogan had organized an online youth conference on YouTube. Youth protested him with thousands of dislikes that created enormous political support to the youth and their problems. And bourgeois politicians try to attract this young generation. Another important problem of the youth is the partisanship relations of Erdogan regime. If you do not have a direct relation with AKP, Erdogan's party, or you are opposed to the regime, it is hard to be employed in public sector. According to a survey, nearly 80% of the young people think that you need to know someone from the inside to be able to get a job. So personal qualifications, knowledge, or graduating from a good school with good notes are not enough to save your future. A combination of the regime and the system make the youth futureless, causing double problems. In summary, the situation of youth in Turkey is not bright. The youth is not happy at all and is looking for an alternative for their future. So what should we do? Um, first of all, we have to organize the youth with our propaganda to, to our party and absorb them into the struggle for socialism. There is no alternative other than socialism to get out of the capitalist precariousness. We, we must recruit and train revolutionary cadres to lead youth in class struggle. Apart from that, we should engage in union struggle with a revolutionary method, taking into account subjective and objective conditions. To respond to concrete conditions and struggles, we should direct young people to organize struggle with existing, existing unions or by establishing new unions. We have seen the increasing resistance of the workers at universities who are pushed into extreme precariousness, especially after the pandemic. We must unite the struggle of the youth and the working classes. Our agenda of struggle should include supporting spontaneous movements of precarious laborers and the unemployed. For example, teachers are one of those who are organizing themselves against contract-based working in public schools. They are trying to establish their own organizations and struggle to find solutions to their problems. Likewise, there's a group of private school teachers who are trying to do the same in private sector in which has no teacher union. Uh, they, are also, uh, they are also basically trying to fight against insecurity and unemployment of special education teachers. Or there is the association of special education teachers. We are also participating and intervening. This new organization includes physiotherapists, speech therapists, or, and private teachers who deal with mentally handicapped people. These are potential areas of struggle for us to actively intervene. Apart from this, we must produce our own campaigns for both precarious and unemployed people. For example, we start a joint campaign called Job and Income Security for All, together with a few social organizations. Under this campaign, we also try to unite the workers who are already in resistance. We must start our own struggle in the sectors where, where we do not encounter spontaneous movements yet. Now, we are carrying out this struggle among textile and tourism, hotel, cafe, and bar workers that are all work under extreme pre precarity. SAFE's youth organization is called Marxist Thought Community. 
And our purpose is to raise this united struggle of the youth and the working class in Turkey. We explain young people that when they graduate from university, what awaits them is either unemployment or precarious work and exploitation. We show young people that securing our future is possible only through struggle for socialism. Moreover, we make progress in terms of having new comrades and increase our political influence. We are the youth organization with the greatest theoretical and practical advances in Turkey, and we keep progressing in every sense. We have a, real, we have a serious responsibility, comrades, and there is no easy way to achieve our goals. Only if we put forward a revolutionary theory and dedication, we can achieve this. The objective conditions of the youth movement exist both in Turkey and world in general. We have already seen the potential of young people to act in social revolts last year. The youth will burn the rebellion fire against this precarious life again. And when the day comes, our forces should be prepared all around the world. We know that only the International Socialist League can do this. If we fulfill this responsibility, a bright future will be awaiting for youth. Thank you.